That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April. Shot down in May. All right, Jets fans, welcome back to another session of Knicks Bros TV here here on Jets uh, Jets Talk. Um, basically, right now, um, I'm just going to discuss the state of the New York Jets, uh, whether if it's going to be John Itzik um, or, or recent trade that we did have for uh, Person Harvin. And also, we're going to talk about Rex Ryan and his future. Uh, first, what I like to do, I like to kind of talk about John Itzik and or trade. Um, this is something that I think uh, is a plus looking at our mediocre wide receivers in the situation we've had on the offensive side for Geno Smith not having much weapon to be able to throw to. Um, but the way I see this is this is a desperate call, meaning uh, this is just my opinion. My Basically what I'm seeing is you know, John Itzik was going to hold to that money. Uh, he was going to hold to that money and kind of throw Rex Ryan under the bus. But what he, what everyone has noticed is the way Rex Ryan has game planned after the San Diego game. I mean, the way he game planned for Denver Broncos, we came very close. You know, it's very difficult back to back weeks to face star quarterbacks like this. And the fact that we maintained that, uh, Geno Smith improved in that game. Minus interception at the end of the game, and also against the New England Patriots, uh, the way our defense came out and played, uh, m- minus that first play we did have, but really just kind of, for the most part, holding Tom Brady and not letting him um, be be himself, and the way we prepared on our offense, but just missed at the uh, red zone. Um, so the way I see it is. Everyone is seeing the improvement in the in the in the magnificent you know the great um, coaching job by Rex Ryan. And here's the thing, you can you can watch my older videos. I I have bashed Rex Ryan over and over again. I even have come up and said, you know what, maybe we do need a new coach. But you know those were usually after games where mostly it was just an emotional decision. Uh, when you sit back and you know take a day or two or take a couple of hours and you know look at it from having a level head here. Um, then you know you can truly see the you know coaching progression that he has made with the New York Jets. Uh, but I'll, but I'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Um, so as far as you know, Percy Harvin is concerned, and him coming to the team. I mean, we're one in six right now. It's a little too late. I'm not saying hey, let's give up the season. No, I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is, I think this is just. A desperate move by John Itzik to make himself look good. At the end of the day, he he can go and say, "Well, I got you a weapon, offensive weapon." You know, um, so that's that's the way I see it. Um, now, as far as Percy Harvin is concerned, he came to the league with the Minnesota Vikings. Um, his first season, in 2009, he had about 60 reception for 790 yards, six touchdowns. 2010, he had 71 receptions, 868 yards five uh, touchdowns in 2011 by far was his best season with 87 um, receptions and 967 yards and then uh, it kind of declined the next year to 62 receptions and then now he plays for the Seattle Seahawks and well now he's he's on the Jets and he's on the Jets for a conditional pick meaning that it's either between a second round or a fourth round pick that the Seahawks get to choose. Um, <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, but I mean, if you if you really look at it, and if you want to sit there and point the fingers, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot to be there's there's too many people to be pointing the fingers at, and rather than Rex Ryan, I think you know you know, and I'm a person that every after every game I listen to ESPN Radio in New York, where on Mondays or the Tuesdays Rex Ryan gets on and kind of discusses. Um, the decisions he's made on the field and things like that. Now, that that thirty-one to zero loss, honestly, every team has kind of every team kind of goes through one or two. I don't want to say every team, but you know the Giants have went through it. Are they a terrible team? No. Sometimes you just get caught off guard with the way you plan, and that's the way I'm going to see it. Maybe I'm being too optimistic. I don't know. Um, but it's the matter how he has rebounded from that. Um, in, the, in the radio, 
that he goes on. I mean, you clearly can see this guy's a leader. He takes the blame for everything and everything there is. And New York media, you know, if you do that, they'll just poke at it and just um, run off with with anything. Um, he has a he has a lot of pride for the team, um, and at the same time, I think the one thing with Rex Ryan is, and this is this is a downfall, but yet it can be a plus. No matter what you give him, he's going to take it, and he's going to be optimistic about it because he has um, he has enough uh, belief in himself that he'll get it done. Now, at the same time, I, I don't don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to back him up or say he's the greatest. No, he has made mistakes. All right, but which which of our coaches in the previous years haven't? Um, what I'm trying to say is, if we get rid of Rex Ryan. This will be one of the biggest mistakes of our franchise. Because if you're going to sit here and point the finger to Rex Ryan with the team that he has been dealt, this has been given this year, then honestly, you must not know much about the New York Jets. Because if you think about it, we haven't we haven't been, you know, one of the best franchises in the NFL, you know, for a while. I mean, if you think about it, from from 2000 and up, we've made the playoffs in 2001, 2002, 2004, 2006. And then with um, Eric Mangini, 2007, 2000, 2007, we're 4 and 12. 2008, we're 9 and 7. Rex Ryan's rookie year, he takes us to a uh, conference championship game that we haven't been to since 1998. Then the next year, he takes us to another um, conference championship game. To just lose by five points. You know, and this is exactly what I'm talking about with, with with the Jets fan base, Jets media, whatever it is, is we don't allow any type of growth. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that Mark Sanchez was not a superstar, but he would have got the job done. And if we would have not brought in Tim Tebow and have him look over his shoulders, right now we could have used the draft pick that we had against Geno Smith to get a good weapon for the wide receiver position. But, again, there's a lot of good things to be looked at. And this is something Rex Ryan said. You know, we, we are, we're starting to see a good running back come out of this season, which is Chris Ivory. Um, you know, Geno Smith is progressing. You know, there's a couple of things that needs to be done on our team as obviously a wide receiver. And even even with getting Percy Harvin, I mean, this is like a Ladanian Tomlinson type of move. Get someone in for the season. But I think going to next free agency, we should really acquire somebody in a wide receiver position. The other good thing that we have seen this year is we've, I think for the most part, we have a solid tight end. But he just needs to brush on some of the detail passes. Um, or offensive line just needs a little bit of work. As far as defense is concerned, our front four is a beast. Our linebackers are just fine. Um, it's our def- defensive backs. Hopefully, again, I'm not trying to be too optimistic, but Milner comes back. He can be our second corner, and then we can acquire um, a better corner. And as far as our safeties are concerned, I like Pryor. I know I've talked bad about Pryor lately, but his coverage stinks. He's got to do a better job, and I think he will, but he's a really good um good as far as tackling he's 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 great at that i don't know how long we have landry for but you know we need to stop putting you know um prior and uh 39 i forgot his name uh, Allen, um as or safety uh put someone with experience like landry with with prior but that's that's my opinion there um now kind of going back to rex ryan uh, you know uh, I think, you know, getting rid of him would be the worst thing to do. Um, no matter how this season kind of ends up, again, we're in a rebuilding stage. I mean, when you come off with two AFC championships, you know, and after having the type of season we had last year um, and the year before, you know, about the butt fumbles and things like that, we're in a rebuilding stage. And if we're not going to be patient enough to be able to handle it, then, you know, we're just going to dig ourselves a bigger hole. So, you know, 
it is what it is. Um, we are one and six, but again, every game that I've seen, we have progressed. Uh, and if, if there's people that want to blame Rex Ryan for the timeouts in that game, you know what? I was mad about it too. But when you sit back and look at, especially that call, we, that, the timeout we took on the defensive end, our defense was confused. I saw the linebackers pointing at the corners. Corners were in like safety positions. It was a player's fault for not being able to uh, maintain that play. And what do you expect for us to not to take time out and allow that play to happen? Who would have known? It probably would have been another long distance pass um, for a touchdown. So you know, it's very easy to look at paper, and be like, "Oh my goodness, why did you take two timeouts in the second half?" When you know calls like that or you know players like that didn't weren't in their positions. But again. You know, that's a little bit of coaching fault right there. But, you know, I think there's enough to go around to say, all right, well, it's your fault, your fault, your fault, and your fault. And if we just go ahead and decide to fire Rex Ryan because of it, then, again, I'm telling you, three, two years from now, when he goes to another team, whatever he does, we will see, um, you know, what we've done. So, again, guys, tell me what you think. Just kind of my perspective on it. Um, I can be more, I can be wrong, but this is just how I feel about the situation. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. And have a wonderful day. Find myself laying flat on my face. I just pick myself up and get back in the race. That's life. That's life. That's life.